Hello and welcome back to the AWS Online Virtual Summit. My name's Steve Bryan and I'm a member of our developer relations team here in EMEA based out of London in the UK. In this session, we're going to be talking about automating threat detection and remediation with AWS security tools, how you can get more insight into what's happening in your, in your AWS account and how you can automate uh, act, taking action on findings that you may or uh, discover in your account. So uh, let's dive straight in and we'll get into the content. So if we look at the foundation layer of security services in AWS, there's a broad portfolio of services available to customers. In fact, there's actually quite a lot of services and you see maybe on this slide, it looks a little bit overwhelming. Now, in terms of this session, we'll be focusing on just the ones that are highlighted here with the orange squares around them. And what we're going to look at is how we can identify um, and how we can uh, detect and automate uh, and investigate those findings using AWS services. So we'll be looking at those areas. We'll be focusing on AWS Security Hub, Amazon uh, Guard Duty, uh, and also uh, CloudWatch Events, uh, AWS Lambda to do some remediation. So some compute services there to help with some remediation. Uh, and then uh, we'll be diving into a new service called AWS Detective at the end of the session as well. So when we think about uh, some of the sources that are most useful when detecting and investigating security events. Of course, log sources are one of the key things that we would look at to try and understand what's going on in our environment. Now, log sources come in various different shapes and formats, from application logs to system logs. And our AWS managed services also provide many uh, logs to give you insight into what's happening in your AWS account as well. So we're just going to talk about some of those log sources initially um, which are also security services or features in their own right in AWS. And then we'll look at how we can use those log sources to provide more insight and automate some remediation in your accounts. So first thing we're gonna look at is uh, CloudTrail. So what is CloudTrail? CloudTrail is a service that allows you to uh, audit every single API call that happens against an AWS API call in your Amazon account. So. Uh, how does this work? Well, first you define an S3 bucket where you want these logs to uh, end up. And then you would, um, every account event occurs generating an API activity. So you would your users would do stuff. Um, and then CloudTrail captures and records that API activity and stores it in as a log in your uh, S3 bucket of choice, in your, your destination uh, bucket. Uh, and you can also optionally deliver that to CloudWatch uh, events and CloudWatch logs as well, so that you can take action on it with things like metric filters uh, and stuff as well. So many customers are using this already uh, today. This service is a, a kind of must-have in AWS. If I can, if you take anything away from this session, it's just make sure you enable CloudTrail, so you get this audit trail of what's going on in your AWS account. In many ways, these are things that are just not available in uh, traditional IT environments. You know, if you're running many heterogeneous providers. On premises, for example, you're not going to get this level of insight into every single action that your team take against your resources in your work that, that are running your workloads. Um, so CloudTrail has a, a ton of features available. It gives you visibility into those event activity. Um, S3 log delivery, obviously CloudWatch logs integration allows you to create these metric filters so you can start to create alerts based on specific filters on these uh, these JSON logs as well. So you can get uh, you can start to use CloudWatch, uh, sorry, CloudTrail logs in a in a in a way that enables you to start to think about how can you take this information that maybe you didn't have before. This is new information. It's allowing you to maybe improve your security posture and how can you analyze that data to take action in your AWS accounts. So if we look at what a CloudTrail event looks like, well, the CloudTrail looks at a few things. It looks at who made the API call, uh, when was the API call made, uh, what was the API call? What was that person doing? Were they launching an AWS EC2 instances? Were they adding someone to a, uh, an IAM group, for example? Um, and which resources were acted upon in the API call? And then where was the API call made from and to? So you see this nice table format here on the slide, uh, and you also see the JSON representation there, which is what gets logged in your buckets or sent onto the, the, your ongoing services that are doing an analytics of these logs. Another service that uh, in AWS that provides uh, logs for us is VPC flow logs. So many people run applications inside of VPCs or virtual private clouds in AWS, and they want to be able to monitor the network traffic uh, that those uh, instances, those EC2 instances or virtual machines are, are, are sending and receiving. 
So VPC flow logs is great because it requires no agents. Uh, I assure you there are no agents required. Uh, you can enable it per uh, Elastic Network Interface, or you can enable it per subnet or VPC. And VPC flow logs allows you to see uh, all of your kind of traditional networking logs that you would see when you're uh, monitoring packets and network traffic in your environment. So you can see you see the interface, the, the source IP address, port, protocol, accept, rejects, those kind of things. So you see all this network traffic uh, data that's logged. And again, this is logged into CloudWatch logs. So you can look at things like creating metric filters and alarms on those metrics. So you can start to be notified if certain things are happening in your uh, uh, in the network space between your EC2 instances uh, in your uh, account. So uh, a, a nice addition, a very simple way to turn on login at the network level in your AWS environment. So if we look at what customers typically do with log analytics, they take these logs from these data producers, whether they're application or uh, system or AWS logs, and they will collect those logs and store them in some permanent storage, in this case, in this example, S3. And you want to transform and analyze those logs. You want to be able to get some insight into those logs. So you may use services like Amazon Athena or um, uh, EMR, Elastic MapReduce, to do some kind of uh, uh, ETL type process uh, on those on those logs, and then you may want to dump them into uh, something like Elasticsearch, so you can visualize them with a tool like Kibana and get some insight into your uh, into what's going on in your AWS environment. Now, this is typical uh, architecture that uh, many customers use for uh, log aggregation in, in AWS. But what I want to spend the rest of the session doing is talking to you about some services from AWS that simplify uh, this for AWS managed uh, logs and give you a, a simplified way of automating the collection of things like CloudTrail and VPC flow logs and providing uh, not just collection and aggregation, but some analytics and machine learning to help you hopefully identify security findings in your account sooner than you would have been able to before. So the first service I want to talk through is Amazon Guard Duty. Amazon Guard Duty is a service that uh, analyzes logs from three log sources. It takes uh, VPC flow logs, uh, uh, CloudTrail logs, we spoke about those, but also these uh, DNS logs. These are logs that are based on queries made from uh, EC2 instances to known and unknown domains. Um, these are additional to Route 53 logs. These are actually the uh, DNS logs from the uh, DNS resolvers inside your uh, VPCs in your AWS in environments. Um, so it consumes data from these uh, logs. One of the great features is that you don't have to turn on any of these log sources. Now we recommend that you turn them on for your own analysis, but Guard Duty actually, uh, by enabling Guard Duty, you enable these uh, these logs, uh, and Guard Duty doesn't actually store any of that data. It uses the it analyzes them in in memory, and then it. Uh, discards the lock, so no data is actually stored in the Guard Duty service itself from a security perspective. So let's take a deeper look at how Guard Duty works. So you get your data sources. We just spoke about those. There's three data sources that are sent into Amazon Guard Duty. And then there's two different types of uh, threat detection types that we see in Guard Duty. The first one is threat intelligence, uh, and this will look for a, a known uh, threats based on intelligence that we have in AWS that we uh, provide to the Guard Duty service. So these will identify things like uh, instances communicating with known, you know, Bitcoin mining uh, farms and those kind of things. But then we also have this anomaly detection service, which will pick up and understand known patterns in your environment and look for unusual behavior in your AWS account as well. So this is really powerful. We'll talk in a second in a bit more detail on how, about how that works. And then based on these uh, uh, detection types and the, the the analysis of these logs, a guard duty provides findings and gives them a severity based on what is found in those uh, logs, and then those findings are pumped into an S3 bucket. But when we look about automation, one of the key benefits is we don't just send them into S3 buckets; uh, we send them into Amazon CloudWatch events. Uh, so this allows you to create rules to filter on these logs and then trigger other AWS services to take action. Um, and we also pump them into a service called AWS Security Hub, which we'll get onto in the next part of the presentation, uh, but a uh, really valuable integration there from Guard Duty into Security Hub. So what can Guard Duty detect? So there's two types of uh, threat, as I discussed. The first one is uh, detecting known threats, and this is through intelligence that we provide into the service. So we have AWS security intel. Uh, we use uh, uh, partners, CrowdStrike, and Proofpoint, so we get intelligence there as well. Um, we also have um, customer-provided threat intel as well. There's an opportunity to do that. Um, and the type of uh, things that Guard Duty can 
identifier are things like uh, anonymizing proxies, uh, cryptocurrency mining, as we spoke about before, and a few others that you see on the slide there as well. Now, the second uh, type of threat that we were able to detect with guard duty are unknown threats. And this is using machine learning to detect unknown threats in your account. And this takes some time to do some training. So um, you typically need to be uh, running the guard duty service for seven to 14 days before you start to see real insight here. And this basically uses a heuristic or anomaly based technique that builds a profile of what normal looks like in your AWS account. And then uh, when uh, anything that anomaly happens or something that's out of the ordinary, uh, guard duty will trigger a finding. An example there may be that you have an IAM user that typically operates you know, in the EC2 space and does some operations tasks, uh, but then all of a sudden they do an action where they uh, create an IAM role or a policy or they assign a role uh, to a user and they, they're not they, that's not a typical action that they do. Guard duty will raise that as a finding for you. So you'll be aware that, uh, you know, some unsuspected behavior has happened in the uh, in IAM, and that would have probably come from a CloudTrail uh, event where it had uh, identified that. So when it comes to enabling uh, guard duty in your account, uh, we already touched on this, but there's no requirement to turn on login. You just enable guard duty in your account. And a brand new uh, feature just in the last few months is that we actually added support for AWS organizations. Um, so you can actually delegate any account in your organization as the guard duty administrator uh, and apply a guard duty to up to 5,000 AWS accounts. And you can also uh, turn on a flag that says that guard duty is auto enabled for any new accounts that are created in AWS organizations as well. So you can ensure that that compliance is met across many AWS accounts in your organization. In the Guard Duty console, you're able to review findings, you're able to see the findings and the severity of those findings in the console, as you can see on the screenshot here. Um, and then you can review those findings either in the console or through some kind of automated integration using the JSON uh, format that you see here on the slide as well. And you see you get a ton of information about these threats. You get the severity, the region, the threat type, the resource that's affected. Um, and then we can send that event to CloudWatch Events, which allows us to think about how we can automate security in our AWS account. So all changes and findings that take place get aggregated in five minute intervals and sent to CloudWatch Events as an aggregated event. Uh, just so when you're uh, analyzing those events, be aware that they may be a groups of events uh, rather than individual uh, events. Um, and they can be graphed, stored, exported, or further analyzed. So when we think about acting on findings, CloudWatch Events adds this great capability for us to enhance our, uh, our automation and improve our security posture in terms of either notification or remediation uh, using AWS services. So we can take our events that are detected in guard duty, we report them into CloudWatch events, and then we can create these rules that say, take an action, go and trigger this Lambda function to uh, do some remediation or uh, store that event in a uh, Elasticsearch cluster via this Kinesis fire hose, or using SNS, email that event to someone or escalate that event to, uh, to a specific team or person in our organization, for example. So there's various different actions you can take uh, uh, using CloudWatch events. It's very powerful and integrates with many AWS services for you to uh, extend the automation beyond just the guard duty uh, service itself. So the next service I want to touch on is uh, Security Hub. So uh, Security Hub is a service that allows us to uh, kind of centralize and aggregate all the security findings in our AWS account. So we get this kind of central uh, dashboard where we can view uh, our findings and insights into what's happening from a security perspective in our AWS account. Um, so you can enable this for all your AWS accounts um, and you can continually aggregate and prioritize findings. You can conduct automated compliance scans and checks. We'll get to that uh, in a second. And then again, as with guard duty, you can take automated actions based on findings and we'll get to the details of how that works in a second. One of the really key benefits of uh, Security Hub is that it comes pre-built with a ton of uh, checks and uh, in in the service for you. So uh, we have this brand new uh, set of rules, 31 rules that are checked against. This is the AWS Foundational Security Best Practice Standard. This uh, uh, just got re released in the last few months. Um, and this is enabled by default in your Security Hub account when you turn on Security Hub. And these 31 checks are analyzed and uh, and uh, Findings will be generated based on the uh, success or failure of those uh, those checks in your AWS account. Um, we also support the CIS 
AWS Foundations benchmark, and we have 43 rules associated with that. Um, and we also, for people doing financial services and payment card industry, have support for PCI DSS uh, framework as well. So these are called security standards, and you can choose to enable the CIS or the PCI uh, uh, standards as you wish, and those rules will uh, look for things like you can see here on the screen. Uh, is CloudTrail enabled in all regions? Are uh, IAM policies with full wildcards um, present in our AWS accounts, for example? So there's various different uh, checks involved in those policies, and you can dive deeper into those. So in the console, you can see that we're looking at the CIS uh, uh, benchmark here, and you can see that we can dive into that, and we can see what the results are from our uh, analysis uh, uh, against those or our, uh, our automated checks that are taking place against those uh, standards in the CIS uh, benchmark. So you can see here we have a few critical events and some, some failed events, so there's some work I need to do on my AWS account here. And then we can see aggregated findings across all sources. Um, so uh, Security Hub has the ability to integrate with many sources such as Amazon Inspector and a Firewall Manager and uh, Guard Duty uh, and many others as well. So we can aggregate our findings across all these sources and run these advanced queries to uh, start to see uh, and find findings and analyze them from a security operations perspective in our AWS account. We also have this thing called uh, insights. So Security Hub insights, when you start to get findings and you group them by a certain attribute, you can start to build these graphs and insights about what's going on in your AWS account or across multiple AWS uh, accounts. Uh, so this is a dashboard that provides visibility into your uh, top security findings. Um, there are 20 pre-built insights uh, provided by both AWS and our partners who integrate with uh, Security Hub as well. But you can also create your in own insights using this group by field. You can create your own custom insights in your uh, Security Hub account. And you can see some examples of ones that already exist in uh, Security Hub today. Uh, the one that I like the most is this insight that will tell you how many and what buckets in your Amazon S3 account are, have public read and write permissions. This is uh, something that everybody should be monitoring. And uh, whilst S3 is secure by default, there's obviously uh, something that you want to be keeping a, a, an eye on there as well. Um, you also may want to see if there's any S3 buckets with stored credentials, if there's any secrets uh, uh, stored in there. Um, this uh, services like Amazon Macy integrate here, so you can get findings from Amazon Macy that are looking if there's any uh, you know, secrets or keys stored in your uh, S3 buckets uh, there as well. So insights allow us to create these kind of nice uh, visualizations and dashboards to help us easily identify the highest risk uh, resources in our AWS account. And as with Guard Duty, we have this very similar interaction. Uh, we take all of our uh, uh, sources. In this case, we're not taking the raw uh, log sources as such. We're taking sources from uh, our other AWS security services and third-party providers, many of which we uh, integrate with. They go into Security Hub, and then Security Hub also integrates with CloudWatch events. So we can send all those events actually get sent by default onto the uh, CloudWatch events event bus, and you can create CloudWatch events rules that allow you to take action based on uh, Security Hub findings. And you could filter, for example, just to take action on findings that had a source product of Amazon Macy, or findings that had a source product of Amazon Inspector, for example. And of course, CloudWatch Events allows us to trigger these target options. Now, there's another feature of uh, Security Hub uh, automation with CloudWatch Events that I want to touch on. So the first one is all events get sent to that event bus, and we can create rules to uh, take action and automate remediation. The second one is something called custom actions. And this is uh, actions that your security operations team can take on a finding in uh, the Security Hub console. So in Security Hub, they can log in, they can see the aggregated findings, they can run their queries. And if they find findings, they can have this drop down where they can say, I want to take this action of doing something. Um, and you can create these custom actions, they're called, that allow you to uh, run custom events. They take the, the, the JSON object of that security finding, and then they send them to CloudWatch events. Uh, but this is not a, this is triggered when the user or the security operations user triggers that action against a specific finding in uh, CloudWatch events. Um, so we're going to flip over to a demo, and we're going to show you how Security Hub custom actions work. We're actually going to create our own uh, custom action that allows us to isolate an EC2 host that we think may be uh, vulnerable because it's communicating with some known uh, cryptocurrency uh, environments. So we'll uh, head over to the demo now. 
Okay, so in this demo, we're going to demonstrate how we can add a custom action to Security Hub that will allow a security operations uh, member of staff to uh, take a, create a custom action. So they'll click this button and it will isolate an EC2 instance. It will move them into a security group where the network boundary is isolated and no permissions are uh, allowed. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a Lambda function. The Lambda function is the code that isolates that instance. We won't spend too much time on this, but I just want to show you uh, what the, the code here does. So we're going to call this security up isolate. We have some uh, Python 3.6 code that we're going to throw in here. And we need to give our Lambda function some permissions. So we're going to use this uh, role that I previously created called Lambda EC2 isolate. This gives me the permissions to isolate the EC2 instance and change its uh, security groups. So we have some code over here that we're going to quickly copy and paste in, and then we'll talk through uh, what it uh, what it looks like. So uh, we'll just replace this code with what we have here. And basically what this, in this code is doing in its uh, simplest form is it's taking the event from Security Hub, uh, it's finding the, inside the finding, it's finding the resources and then the, uh, the EC2 instance IDs from those resources and then it's iterating through them and modifying the security group. The actual API call here is modify instance attributes. And what this does is it updates the uh, current security groups with a uh, security group, our isolated instance security group. Now this code's uh, kind of nice. This is the security group ID that we'll be putting in. Uh, this code actually uses a environment variable called a security underscore SG. So we're just gonna add our environment variable here. We're going to add one called security underscore SG and put our security group in there. Great. So we go back to our code here and it's still there, thankfully. And as we save this, we have a, a Lambda function here called SH isolate that will take an event from security hub, uh, find the instance IDs associated with it, and then uh, update that security group. So this is the kind of bulk of the code associated with the action. Now we will integrate that to our security hub with a custom action. So if we go over to Security Hub, um, we have uh, some findings here. You know, we have some insights into what's going on in in our environment. But we want to head to the Settings tab where we can create these customs act custom actions. Now I already have one custom action. Uh, this sends an email to the uh, CISO, so we're using SNS, and this this one we're going to call Isolate Instance, and we're going to say Isolate EC2 Instance Network. Uh, and we're going to call this isolate instance. Now, what that would do is create a custom action, and we have a, a, a ARN associated with that called uh, isolate instance here, which is associated with our account, account ID as well. Now, when somebody triggers this custom action, it will send an event to Amazon CloudWatch events, and then the CloudWatch events will, uh, with this custom ARN in there, so you can create a CloudWatch event that filters on that. So we'll do that uh, right now. So we're going to CloudWatch events. This is the CloudWatch console, and uh, we'll create a rule in here. And what we need is we need to create a, 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 a we're going to use an event pattern. CloudWatch event uh, supports scheduled events, so you can run an event every five minutes or 10 minutes or so um, using a cron syntax. But we want to use an event pattern uh, because Security Hub is already sending the event to our event bus. We need to just create this uh, this pattern, this rule that does some kind of pattern matching to see what's going uh, to, to filter on our uh, custom action. So we go back to our code here. We have uh, the JSON required here for our custom action. And we'll just paste this in here and walk through it. So we're saying that any event that comes into our event bus that is a uh, source of AWS Security Hub is a, a detailed type of custom action and has this ARN associated with the uh, with the resource. Uh, we will uh, trigger uh, these triggers that we associate. In this case, we're going to trigger our Lambda function. So we've created this event pattern in CloudWatch events, and then we can select our security up isolate uh, function here. So we have a event source. It is our filter on uh, the event and the pattern here that matches it. And we have our target, which is our Lambda function, which is going to trigger when uh, somebody uh, chooses to kick off this custom action. So we'll quickly configure the details. We'll call this security hub isolate as well. And we'll create that rule. So now what we've done is we've created a, a rule in uh, uh, CloudWatch events. We've created a custom action in security hub and we've created the Lambda function that is uh, going to take the action of actually isolating that instance. So if we go to our uh, EC2 management console, 
um, we can see that we've got a, a, an instance over here which is causing us a bit of uh, trouble. But I just want to show you what security group it's in uh, at the moment so that you can uh, see that we're actually uh, updating it. So we have this instance called uh, uh, Red Team. It's in this security group, Red Team Security Group. And you can see the ID ends in uh, CA63. So if we go back to EC2, we go to our Security Hub console and we have a look at our findings. Um, I know there's a finding from a little while ago uh, that came actually from our guard duty integration. So I can filter here on product name equals guard duty. And I could find this uh, Bitcoin related domain name queried by this EC2 instance. Uh, and this is the same EC2 instance we uh, spoke about, the, um, the, the red team instance. Uh, you can see the ID here is uh, FB53F. Uh, and if we go back to EC2, you can see that this is our FB53F instance. It's reaching out to some crypto mining, crypto mining servers. So we maybe want to take the action to isolate that instance so we can do some kind of review on it. So as a security operations person here, I've just came across this event in my uh, guard duty console. I can select that. And now at the top of the page here, from my actions, I have a new action. I'm able to isolate that instance. So if I click this, we can see that um, that uh, they sent the find into Amazon CloudWatch events. So if we go back to our uh, Lambda console and uh, cross our fingers, we should see from a monitoring perspective that this event was, this Lambda function was triggered. And we'll see that in just a few seconds. Okay, if we refresh here, you can see, actually, we can see that that was actually uh, triggered there. So now what we can do is go back to our EC2 uh, console and we can take a look at our instance. We can refresh our, our view here and we can see what uh, security group our instance is. We can see that that instance is now in our security group isolated hosts. This is a different security group from what we saw before and our EC2 instance has successfully been isolated into a security group that has no access. So hopefully a quick, view of how you can integrate Security Hub via CloudWatch events with uh, triggers such as uh, uh, Lambda functions to create or, uh, various different uh, security-based operations that you may want to take in your uh, AWS account. So finally, uh, before we wrap up, I just want to quickly touch on a new-ish service that uh, recently went uh, GA just a few months ago as well called uh, Amazon Detective. Now, Amazon Detective is a, a new security service uh, that allows you to analyze, investigate, and identify the root cause of your security issues. So it has built-in data collection and automated analysis and gives you these visual insights into helping you find the root cause of the security uh, incident in your uh, AWS account. So how does Amazon Detective work? Well, you would uh, enable uh, Amazon Detective. It will consume uh, logs, uh, uh, both the raw logs from CloudTrail and VPC Flow logs as well, similar to Guard Duty, but also uh, Guard Duty findings as well. So those insights that have come from those uh, uh, those uh, raw logs as well. Um, and then uh, when you're investigating a security finding in uh, a Security Hub, um, you can get to the root cause by exploring this. There's a button there to explore it in Amazon Detective, and that will open Detective for you. And Detective is a service that uses uh, machine learning and graph theory uh, to connect the dots between all these log sources. So instead of uh, just looking at uh, one log source and saying we think that something's happened, it actually uh, starts to build relationships between all these different uh, sources to help you come to the root cause of the finding uh, much quicker than maybe you could have before. Um, so hopefully we're using Detective, the benefit is that you get faster and more effective investigations, save time and effort with uh, continuous updates and uh, some visualizations that easily come to that root cause of the problem in your AWS account. Uh, we also integrate with various technology partners that you can see on the slide here. And then we also have various uh, consulting partners as well that integrate with Detective to help us uh, uh, to help our customers uh, accelerate their security and uh, in their environment. So you can uh, Look up those on the AWS Partner portal and you can see what partners are available to help you get started with Amazon Detective. So that's it today, a 30 minute tour into some of the ways and the tools in AWS that allow you to aggregate logs and automate your uh, remediation uh, uh, against threats that may be happening in your uh, AWS account, but also tools that allow you to detect and analyze and investigate those uh, findings as well. So uh, thanks very much for having me and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.